uh, one of the things that we're going to look at is improving our traffic and helping on climate goals by looking at and studying congestion pricing. We know it can't stand alone. We know it's a heavy lift that we have to engage people deeply before doing that. And we have to make sure that it is paired up with meaningful transit because we can't ask people to get out of their single occupancy vehicles unless there are meaningful options they have, whether that is buses, walking, bikes, or other public transit. So we will be working hand in glove to make sure that we improve those abilities for people to get out of their cars while looking for great incentives for people to also not drive into our sitter city. Can you elaborate on what exactly you're proposing here with congestion pricing? The congestion pricing, as you know, that there's a study underway with the Seattle Department of Transportation. Seattle is becoming a big city. We need to have a city in the future that is that kind of city where we squint our eyes and think, where do we want to be? And I think all of us want to be in a city that is easy to get in and out of, that's pleasant to walk around, to bike around, to shop, to have cafes. And so one of the things we can do is look at congestion pricing to make sure that when we enter a certain core of the city, that if you're going to be the person driving in there, you got to pay more money. Um, we can't do it alone. We've got to work with stakeholders. We've got to work with businesses. We've got to work with shops and small business owners. We also have to make real on the reality of transit. One can't work without the other. So we will study it, do that hard work, and look at how we use this as one of the tools to join some of the great cities in the in the world who do this that we travel to we all think it's a you know we love it when we're there seattle's going to be that kind of city let's do it intentionally what's right. your timetable though because there's not light rail going through the city and there's a streetcar that right now uh, in the center city is also on hold you know we're going to look at mobility as a network and no one can look at any one prong of it and say without that we can't move we have to look at it as a network. So we will do that. We will study all the options. The timetable is we'll do it as expeditiously as possible that we can have it make sense and work with the people who are going to affect it. Because you don't do it just to do it. You do it to be smart. But how can you justify you, are you escalating, pricing are you, at all? Are you escalating a war on cars? No, absolutely not. To, to the contrary, those people who will be driving in their cars that have to use their cars and those systems find that it's actually more efficient and more effective. What we want to do is get people out of single occupancy vehicles into other alternatives. To do that, we have to have other alternatives that are real. You know, there was a lot of questions, for example, this week on the new parking regulations. We made very clear that my position was, if we're really going to reduce the amount of parking because there's frequent transit service, we have to really believe that there will be frequent transit service. So our studies show more and more people are getting out of their cars, they're getting on buses, they're getting on light rail, they're biking, they're walking. If it's a safe and real alternative, if we make it a safe and real alternative, that will happen, so we have to do it in conjunction with that. But, Mayor, but what are the real alternatives, and is part of your study to look at some of those? We're looking at all those alternatives. We are building those types of infrastructures as we speak. As we know, we are going to be in a period of maximum constraint as we have these mega projects coming online. Those mega projects are going to create mega gridlock if we don't start doing something different and innovative. How do you do this through a lens of equity where people who have the money to pay are the ones who actually get access to that? That's why we have to make sure we do deep outreach to communities and we have real alternatives so people who don't have that ability have the same accessibility into our inner core in every part of our city. We also have to make sure that we're looking at routes we don't often talk about. It's really difficult, for example, to get east-west in Seattle. Um, so we're going to use, a, working with the council and others, we're going to look at creative solutions, both short-term and long-term, to provide more mobility. There is nobody, there is nobody, no matter how they travel right now, whether it's bus, car, bike, or foot, that isn't frustrated. And we know that, and what we want to do is address that so that as we work through these difficult periods of growth in Seattle, we get to that city that figures it out during that period of time. Madam Mayor, would there be I some sort of exemption it. for people who truly are small business, truly are low income, but need their car to conduct the business? Maybe it's a small <coughs> cleaning service. I, I think it's way too early to talk about exemptions because we don't know what it's going to look like. We've got to study it, we've got to talk to people, and we've got to listen to people. You know, I've said it over and over again, and I really mean it. It's not going to be top-down government. 
We are going to listen to people and learn about where these challenges are, whether they're equity challenges or business challenges. And we're going to craft our policies to try to make this the best city for everyone.